And we start off with a bit of review. So a quick check. Did you get sine theta by itself and get your reference angle? Then because sine is negative, it will be in quadrants three and four. Where was it? So it's not on your pie plate. This makes it a calculator question. You have to find your reference angle, then use your cast rule to say it's in quadrant three and quadrant four. For the second question, again, get tan by itself and get your reference angle. 0 0.359, and because tan is negative, you will get answers in quadrant two and quadrant four. So these are the questions that you would get also in Chapter 6. They're in Chapter 6 and they're in Chapter 7. So we do the beginning of Chapter 7 before you do your Chapter 6 test because it's all review of Chapter 6 stuff. Well, I'll show you what the new thing is at the beginning of Chapter 7, but it actually, the new thing connects two things from Chapter 6 together. So again, it's a really good review. Next questions. Get close by itself, and you get four, which you can do without your calculator because it is not possible. Because this would be four over one. Can you draw a triangle where the hypotenuse is one and the adjacent side is four? No. So for sine and cosine, not for tangent, but for sine and cosine, if you get a cos ratio bigger than one, you can right away go not possible because it's not possible to draw that triangle. This is what is going to be new in Chapter 7. In Chapter 6, they always told you between 0 and 2 pi. Or sometimes they said negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Or pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. They always gave you a domain in Chapter 6. And in Chapter 7, sometimes they say theta can belong to all the real numbers. This is called the general solution. because you have every single answer possible. So the way that you do it is you solve just like in chapter six, get 10 by itself, one over root three you might recognize as the same as root three over three. This is on your pie plate. What's your reference angle? Pi over six family. And so tangent is negative in 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. This is exactly like chapter 6. We solve between 0 and 2 pi and you can get those two answers. But the general solution says there could be more. If you kept going around the circle, you could hit more angles that do the same thing. So what we do in chapter 7 is we say if these are the two answers between 0 and 2 pi, if I write all the coterminal angles with them. And that's another thing we did in chapter 6. Do you remember when you did in degrees plus 360 degrees times k, where k was an integer? And in radians, instead of 360 degrees, you'd write 2 pi times k. And this is how we would write the general solution. And this is the new thing for chapter 7. You take each of the angles between 0 and 2 pi, and write the general solution by adding 2k pi. This is the same idea that you did when you did coterminal angles. When questions asked, can you write all the coterminal angles with 5 pi over 6? You would say yes. 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi times k. Now, for whatever reason, they decided they liked the k in the middle. If you wrote 2 pi times k, perfectly fine, okay? But you'll find that for whatever reason, they like the pi at the end, the k in the middle. Somebody decided that looked the nicest. But it means 2 pi all the way around times as many times as you want. And the k is an integer because it has to be a whole number. You can add 2 pi once, 2 pi twice, 2 pi three times. And we write it like this one of them and the second one, and then draw a line and just say, describe k 
from all of them. So this is the idea that is new. Okay? Now, here's a picture of 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 with a lot of arrows. I'm not trying to hypnotize you. Just making it pretty. Okay? Now, when we write it this way, you took 5 pi over 6, you went all the way around, you got another one, you went all the way around, you got another one. But can you see that 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 are exactly halfway around? Does that make sense? That I could go halfway and get to 11, then halfway and get back to here. So sometimes on an exam, if this was multiple choice, they would have it written this way. That if I started at 5 pi over 6, and I jumped by pi's, and this only works with tangent, actually. Jump by pi, that would get me to 11 pi over 6. Jump by pi, back to a 5 pi over 6. By pi, to another 11 pi over 6. This is more, as a mathematician would say, is a more elegant solution because it's simpler. If it was a long answer, you could write it either this way or this way. Both would be fine. And in fact, with sine and cosine, you'll only be able to do the top way. It's only with tangent that, according to your cast rule, you notice in tangent that they're always opposite. Positives are 1 and 3, negatives 2 and 4. So there'll always be a distance of pi with tangent in between them. So I'll get you to turn to the top of page 574. And you have a little bit of space there, and we'll write out, write out the rules for the general solution. which we did in part D there as well. You know it's a general solution question. When they ask you to solve and they tell you that either theta belongs to the real numbers, or they say in the question, find the general solution for blah, blah, blah. What do we do? We solve it like normal just like we did in chapter 6. Find your reference angle, use your cast rule to find out which quadrant it's in, and write your answers between 0 and 2 pi. And the only new thing is, is you have to write all the coterminal angles with your answers from 0 to 2 pi. So we add 2k pi, k belongs to the integers, to each of our answers. And we've got the general solution. And that's the only thing new in 7.1. So what we're going to do is instead of solving question one, we're going to do this question instead. Was everybody done? OK, I, I get excited. I'm sorry. So instead of example number one, I'd like you to, you can put an X through example number one if you'd like, and write this underneath instead. Solve for theta. Theta belongs to all real numbers of 7 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. So what would we do? We would get sine theta by itself, and you would find the reference angle. Sorry, I can't help but showing you something cool. Um, and this happens only with sine. And if you take AP calculus next year, you'll understand some of the reasoning behind it. But if I do 1, 7, I get 0.1428. If I do sine inverse, oh, I need to be in radians. Sine 
sine inverse of 1 7. You notice how those numbers are actually the same to three decimal places? But they're not quite. But they're very close. This only works with sine, and it works with every single number close to zero. So for example, check this out. Sine inverse 110. What is 110? 0 0.1. Look what sine inverse of 110 is. 0 0.1. Let's try, let's try, ooh, 137, something, 0 0.027. And if I would do sine inverse of 137, that's super cool. It only happens with sine, and it's super cool. And when you take linear approximation in AP calculus, it helps explain why. But we don't need to know why. We can just marvel at how cool it is right now. Which is terribly frustrating on the exam because sometimes the mistake that happens is that students actually don't figure out sine inverse for the reference angle. They just did 1 7th and we don't know if they did it wrong or not. Because the numbers are so similar. So usually then on the exam they don't use sine. If they use cosine they would know right away if you made that mistake. And so we use our reference angle to solve between 0 and 2 pi, just like normal, and you would get 3.28 and 6.14. Once you have your two answers, to do the general solution, all you do is take each of them and add 2k pi. So up to here is exactly like chapter 6. Writing the general solution is just writing all coterminal angles, which is also chapter 6. But knowing to put those two ideas together, that's the first idea of chapter 7. I'm going to add a part B to this one. Are we ready? Oh, I have a part C as well. I have three of them for you to do. I want you to try this one on your own. And I'll put the answer up in a second, and you can check if you got it right.
All right, did you get so the thing I didn't show in your work, your reference angle should have been 1.369. If you did everything else wrong after that, yes, you would get points for the reference angle. If, if you got, if you have your reference angle right, but then did the rest wrong, you get some points. If you got it wrong and didn't write the reference angle, you would get zero points. If you got it right, I didn't write the reference Then you would be fine. Sure. Yes. Ready? Now our last one. It's going to be our toughest one. Because it reviews a lot from chapter 6. Okay? Also in the last one, and this happened on one exam, they decided never to do it again, but just in case it does, if a question ever says, just solve for theta, it didn't say general solution, it doesn't say theta er. It doesn't say 0 to 2 pi. It just says nothing. You're supposed to know when it says nothing that they want you to find all the solutions. Which kind of makes sense. That if they want you to solve, you wouldn't just solve a little bit. You should solve for all of it. But it causes some confusion because some students only solve between 0 and 2 pi. When this is another way, technically, of asking the general solution. So if this was a chapter six question, and this is also true for chapter seven questions, you always first Well the other thing that's interesting in this question is now that you get to higher level math, it didn't say radians or degrees. Technically they would have accepted your answer in degrees. But in higher level math, when it doesn't say, it also assumes radians. Because we use radians for all of calculus and all higher level mathematics. So we need to first solve for 0 less than theta less than 2 pi, just like before. This is a quadratic equation. So you either have to factor or use the quadratic formula. Oh. And what do you think I did? Do you think I made one that factored? No. So this also is going to review our quadratic formula. On your formula sheet, it says for ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. It's on your formula sheet this year. You get no formula sheet at all in AP Calculus. So every single formula you've ever learned, you have to know. This is an A. Looks terrible. Okay. Is that your question? Yeah. yeah. Minus 4AC over 2A. Now we don't have an X squared. We have a tan squared. So we will write that tan of theta equals negative B plus or minus b squared, which would be 9, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 7, over 2 times a. I'm just going to simplify this. Negative 3 plus or minus square root 37 over 2. Not a pretty number, but we have to start to realize that the math is the same with pretty numbers and not pretty numbers. So what do I mean by that? Well, with the plus or minus, we actually get two things. We get tan of theta once with the plus sign, and we get tan of theta once with the negative sign, or the subtract sign. And that means we have to solve these separately. 
They both need to have a reference angle because obviously that is not on our unit circle. Not pretty numbers are not on your unit circle. And then we have to use the cast rule. Sometimes when there are fractions like this, it's not a bad idea to go to our calculator. Was it negative 3 plus the square root of 37 over 2? 1.541. Not bad to change it to a decimal just so that you're like, oh, it's a positive number. So it's going to be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. And over here, type this one into my calculator. And if you have a graphing calculator, did you know that you can highlight things that you typed before? Push enter, and then you could just, like, all I need to do is edit that plus sign to a subtract sign. Negative 4.541. So that one's negative, and I know that it's going to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So I'm going to take my first one. And if it's in quadrant 1, it'll be 1.541. And if it's in quadrant 3, I would have to go pi plus, oh, that's not my reference. I haven't found my reference angle yet, have I? Let me just check where I am. No, I didn't. So before we go to solve it, we have to first find a reference angle. So I'm going to have to go and do tan inverse of, and I could either highlight this one, or I could even highlight the fraction. I'm going to do that. Tan inverse of this, my reference angle is 0.995. To three decimal places. And so my actual answer, well, one of the answers when tan is positive is in quadrant one, so that'll be identical to my reference angle. And my second one will be in quadrant three, so I'd go pi plus my reference angle and get 4.137. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to find our reference angle. And finding our reference angle, so I'm going to go tan inverse. I'm going to go up and steal this number from before. And I get a reference. Oh, oh, oh. What's the problem with that number that I stole? There's a little tiny problem. With, I stole that number, which happens to be negative 4.54. What problem am I going to run into with my reference angle? It's negative, right? With reference angles, we always use positive numbers. So like, oh my goodness, a couple of things you could do, okay? This is what I like to do. If the number is negative, and I times it by negative 1, does that make sense? It will become positive. Okay, the other thing we could have done, so I'll just push enter there, is if you had done tan inverse and instead stolen the actual negative number, again, I would multiply by negative 1 because it's a lot quicker than this. Delete. That took a long time. And then if you hit delete at the wrong spot, you're like, oh. I deleted the wrong number. That will give you the same thing. So our reference angle is 1.354. Oh, there's... Has anyone noticed this ever? Let me just show you something. Take that number. Has anyone noticed that sometimes if you forgot that the negative was there and you do the tan inverse, 
You get the same number, just there's a negative. So it seems like, oh, maybe I don't have to worry about the negative. I'll warn you, you do. For sine and tangent, this happens, but cosine is sneaky. Cosine is sneaky. For example, if I did cos inverse of 2 divided by 5, and I compare that with cos inverse of negative 2 divided by 5, cos is sneaky. It gives you a way wrong answer. So it's important for your reference angle that you always use positive values. You might get away with it with sine and cosine if you make that mistake and just go, oh, I'll make it positive. But cosine will catch you. The cosine answer that it, when you put a negative into cosine, it always gives you an answer in quadrant two. Sine and cosine give you a negative answer in quadrant four. Again, you'll learn a little bit why that happens when you do AP calculus next year. But for right now, we'll just make sure that whenever we do our reference angles, we use the positive value. I'm going to go back and get my answer from before. So let's say I just did this. I got my reference angle. Something that's really nice on a graphing calculator is the store button. And they have these on scientific calculators as well. If you hit the store button, you can store the answer as any letter you want. A, B, C, C, I have them all in green. You can also just click X because it's the quickest and store it as X. What's really nice about this is here, since tangent was negative, we need to find it in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. In quadrant 2, it would be pi minus your reference angle. And I could just go second answer, but now that I have it stored as x, I can just go pi minus x. And then in quadrant 4, it'll be 2 pi minus your reference angle. So I don't have to re-click that number. It's nicely stored. And so I get 1.788. And I get 4.929. So each of these have been rounded correctly to three decimal places. This is chapter 6. All the way up to here is a review of chapter 6. The only thing new in chapter 7 that I'll change to purple is then the general solution. You would take all of your answers, 0 0.995. I like to write them in order. It doesn't. They wouldn't take a mark off if you didn't. Add 2k pi to each of them. Where k is an integer. That's the only thing new in chapter 7, which is just writing all the coterminal ones with each of the answers you found. Five, six, and nine.